Hi, this is Greg Koopman. I'm going to today. I'm going to show you how to integrate uh, Azure Databricks inside your Azure Data Factory pipelines. Okay, but before before we start into Data Factory, let's go over to Databricks. Okay, so I'm in Azure Databricks right now, and I've established uh, to watch this video. You're going to have to have some um, Databricks experience, uh, but you can still watch it, and you actually will gain some uh, information on that too. So basically, I'm in Databricks right here, and I have um, a couple. I have a workspace called Demos. There we go. And in Demos, I have um, two different uh, Python scripts. One is called hard-coded values, and the other is called parameter values. Okay? So, so what I'm going to do here is show you my hard-coded values first. And it's a very simple script. I have a data account, a storage account name here, a storage account access key, which is fake, of course. And it comes down here, and it just establishes a folder information variable, OK? Uh, so it's not really doing much here. I just, again, the purpose of this whole video is so that I can show you how to integrate Azure Databricks notebooks into your data factory pipeline. And with that, uh, being able to pass in parameters and be able to uh, retrieve a result set. Okay, that you can use. Okay, so in this scenario, of course, we're not passing in any parameters. Uh, these is, this is a hard coded example. So here I have data lake, blob storage, and some sort of crazy account key, which really won't be used, but it's uh, coming in anyways as a parameter. And then I have some hard code, uh, additional hard coded values here, and it ends up creating a, a uh, file load pass. So let me just run this right now. Run cell. And actually, right now, it looks like my cluster is detached. Okay, the cluster started, and you can see it up here. My name of my cluster is Test Cluster, 15 minutes, 8 gigabytes memory, 4 nodes, and 5.5 uh, dBU. So I just bought the cheapest one possible. 15 minutes means that if I don't use it within 15 minutes, it's going to stop again to save money. Um, okay, so that's it. I uh, just want to let you know that. That's the name of it, and that's kind of this describes it too. So anyways, it takes about 5 minutes for it to kick in. Um, so I just had to wait there. Sorry about that, but uh, that's learning. You know, you get to learn there. So, anyways, basically, again, this is the hard uh, coded values, storage account, data lake blob store I have here, and storage account access key, some some bogus key. And what it does is it comes down here and it concatenates this. You might have seen this in my video on Azure Databricks earlier. Another one um, that does a lot more and explains how the Databricks works a lot better, but it doesn't have anything to do with Data Factory. Okay, but so I, I actually chopped it all off and just started with the top. And basically what this does is concatenates a bunch of these different constants and uh, variables and uh, ends up with a um, load path. And then I append it to my name with a pipe, del pipe delimited. So that when you return values from Databricks, you use a pipe, you can then break it out into different variables. Okay, so let me run the second one, run the cell. And as you see, the result um, exit, uh, finishes with this particular result nothing new you got the path and you got the pipe and then you have my name Greg Koopman and then what you're gonna see here is this will output it back to this will output it back to data factory okay so now the question is how do we get data I want to put the, bring these two in from data factory uh, these two variables and I want to make them parameters or arguments you want to call it um, and I want those to come in from data factory all the rest is gonna stay the same okay so what I did was I created another one called Guess what is called ADF demo using parameter values. Okay, surprise, surprise. So what I did here, as you see, I did keep the other ones as comments. I just commented out the hard coded ones. Okay, but then I brought these in, and what you use to bring them in is dbutils.widgets.get, and then the name of the name of the parameter you're bringing in. Very simple. This is really really pretty simple. The Databricks, uh, a lot of it's uh, the Python and all that. Is, once you get it, it's it's pretty easy to use. Um, and same thing with this, a storage account key. And there's your storage account key widgets, and that's basically how you bring it in. And then after that, those will be concatenated to here, and then the result will come out here. We're going to see that. So I'm going to jump over to my data factory, and in this data factory, I'm going to show you, I'm going to run it, first of all. Basically, here's, it consists of only three objects, the notebook for Databricks, and two variables, okay? Parameters coming in will be, again, that storage account name that I told you before. I'll call that boring blob files and storage account access key, and I call that all these crazy things, and I just call it the middle crazy account key, okay? So that's what we're sending into this notebook. 
And then when we come back out, I'm going to break apart the pipe, and I'm going to call one a file location and the other one my name variables. All right? Nothing fancy here. So let's go ahead and run this. And I say OK. It looks shows me my two parameters I'm sending in. I say OK. The cluster's already started, so we don't have to worry about that. And it should kick right in here. And we should see our results. After this, though, I'm going to break it all down, and we're going to look into the settings for all these things because that's where the that's where the real difficulty is. Okay. Uh, in fact, we'll probably just go ahead and remake that whole notebook object from scratch, so you can see how I do it because that's that can get tricky, and that's the part you really got to get. The other parts are basic data factory objects and set and variables and parameters. I'm not going to go through that stuff. Okay, so here's the result, and. Here's where it starts at the Databricks. Okay, so I have the input, and you'll see um, there's my the notebook path that I'm going for demos ADF parameter values one, right? And the other uh, in the in the parameters I'm sending in is boring blob files, and my access key is SFLD da 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 crazy account key da 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 da. da. All right, so that's what I got for that. By the way, if you want to subscribe, please do so, and if you like this video, kick on the light, kick on the light, no, press on the like key. Thanks. My only commercial on this video. All right, so so that's cool, right? So we got the we got the input going in. Let's see what the output looks like. The output, I'm gonna make this bigger. The output over here, we see the run output. It's called, and it shows me that whole concatenated thing with the boring blob files in it. <clears throat> then a pipe. Then my name. Exactly the way we, what we wanted. Okay, so very simple, but you know. Setting it up isn't all that simple, so that's what we're about to do. All right, so um, then I come over here and I basically set up these uh, file variables to, to to take those and parse them out of that string based on that uh, delimiter, the pipe delimiter, and the rest is history. Well, the rest is done because there's nothing else after that. All right, so let's go ahead and see how this is all done. But then I'm actually going to go through it. I'm going to run through it really quick to show you the settings, but then I'm going to run through to find out where the settings are. So here's our parameters. That we're sending in, that we're going to set them. Uh, variables, I have file location and my name, which are going to be populated last. And then the next part is right here. And this is, keep the focus, this is Databricks. Um, I'd like to move that up. Let me move this up a little bit. I'll move this up. Okay, so we see everything. So this is my Databricks object and how we configure it. Okay, so first of all, I go into uh, parameters and I set up my storage accounts just like this. No big deal. I click on here, and I, it's very simple. All you have to do is go to pipelines, and you'll go down and you find your pipelines. See parameters, or in this case, not pipelines, parameters, because that's what I'm in. And you just click on it, and it will come right up here. As long as you're clicking one, it's no problem. If you're clicking two, where you like concatenate them in that, go watch my video on concatenation of JSON. It also applies to um, concatenation um, in these this regard too. But in this case, we're just passing one parameter, so it's easy peasy. All right, second of all, let's go and cancel there. So that's my pipeline. So that's how you get the pipelines. Data, um, the next part is, well, general. Let's go to general. That's just the name. I just named it whatever I want. I can name it whatever, anything. So, but now here comes Databricks. We have to have a link service. All right, and this is what is a little bit more difficult. So in order to do this, all right, so here I am. Again, I go into data. I, I put my name in of the object. Then the linked service. So this is where we go. We could go to new if you don't have one already. And I click new, and I see Databricks two. I'm gonna create a new one, okay? And and this is my integration runtime with Azure, which is fine. We want that. Um, we don't need. We need the uh, Azure integration runtime, okay? I then from here account method selection. I want to enter manually because I already got my Azure Databricks notebook set up, right? I don't want to. Uh, anything else. So I'm going to enter manually. And the first part is where do I get the Databricks workspace URL? All right. Very good. So let's jump over to our data, our Databricks. And to see the workspace, I'm just going to Databricks from the start. So I go into Databricks. I want you to know I only have one uh, named workspace here, which is test01. So I go to test01. You're going to see a URL here. Okay. And you're going to need that URL. So let's copy that guy. And that's what goes here, your workspace URL. All right. So I'm just going to paste that in there. No need for the dynamic content. Now access token. How do we get to the access token? All right. It's a little more tricky. We launch the workspace. 
and I'll go ahead over to my I think you can go you can go to any um, of your notebooks I'm just going to this notebook and then I go up to test 01 which is my workspace name I click on that and all I do here is I go to user settings right when I go to user settings it says generate new token Okay. Now you can't use any of these tokens because these are the real token is behind these num these numbers. They're invisible. But I'm going to generate a new token to use. So I'm just going to go like that. And ask me for how many days. I'm just going to leave it 90. And I can write a comment on it. So this one I might write uh, ADF ADF demo 2. Okay. So then I generate and it's going to generate this token. Right. So now you can't do a right click and copy so you just do a control c which i just did right to my notepad just i don't want to lose it because as it says here make sure to copy the token now you won't be able to see it again and believe me that's true okay so you don't see it now you see this number but that's not going to help you here and i'm going to go back to my factory where it says token so i'm just going to go ahead and paste it in there i'll never know what that see that token again and then I come down to the next one, it says select cluster. Well, I already have a cluster. I don't need a new job cluster. So I'm going to say existing interactive cluster. And since it's looking at my workspace URL and my token, it's already connected. So it's going to see my cheapy test cluster, 15 minutes, 8 gig memory, 4 nodes, dot 5 dbu. And I'm going to select that. Now I'm golden. Okay. So basically, I just go to test connection. It should test out fine. And then I can create it. So now I've created that. That. I've created that uh, Databricks link service. So basically now I have two. I had one before, and now I have the Azure Databricks 2. If we went over here, we'll see two of them. So let's see, Azure Databricks 1, Databricks 2. Databricks 1 is one I created before, and the one when you saw the demo run. All right, so we're in good business there. So let's jump back over to this um, to my tab right here. And in the tab then, we're going to go back to here and make sure our configurations are right. So I have my general, that's good, which I'm going to just call copy in front of it for now. Actually, I don't need to do copy, but that's okay. We'll just leave it at that. Just to show that's different from the other one. Uh, I went in here. I created my link server, so I'm all set up there. I'm all linked. Now I go to settings. And the settings, um, you can, this is, it's, you need to start it with a backslash, and then demos, then ADF demo using parameter, uh, and that shows the whole deal, right? Okay, um, I had a little trouble here. I actually went to the browse. I'm going to do this right now. And I went to demos. And I went to my parameter values. And I'm double clicked on it and let it come in this way. And for some reason, it didn't like it. Uh, but after a while playing with it, it worked. So either I did something wrong or you got to just give it some time, but keep messing with it. But that's all I did. I actually had to go and I tried to put my workspace in front of it, everything else. It didn't work. And then by the time I got back to it, it finally worked. So who knows? But all I'm saying, if you have problems with it, that's really all you should have to do is browse it like that and go like, we're going to see right now if we've got problems with it. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're not going to use any libraries. We're just going to have our two parameters, which are already set up there. But if they weren't, let's just delete these. I'm going to delete both of them. But the two parameters you're sending in, you need to set them up. So I go to New. I go to the value. The value. I'm going to enter the value. And I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go Storage Account Name. Just one click. Don't double click because you get twice, you know, you'll be both, you have two of these. So just that, just like that, that's perfect. And then I'm going to go into the new one, and this one's going to be the account. And I'm just going to click here and go into that, those accounts. Click here, come on, Greg. Okay, and go down to the uh, parameters again, and there's my a account access key. Right? Uh, see, I double cl I clicked it twice. So I got to do it once. So storage account key. That's right. Finish. Okay, and for the name, I also put in the same exact name. So storage account name, as you can see right here, right in there. And I'm going to do the same over here. Storage, because that's the name they're expecting. Uh, storage account access key. All right, so that's important. You need to name those right. All right, so I got my two parameters I'm sending in and settings there. I think that's it. I think we're ready to go. So now we got everything in there. Um, it, 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 we're going to let it do the, 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 the Python script in that notebook, do the rest. And remember, in that Python script, this piece get over there, it's going to send back right here where you say the exit. See the exit there? When you do the, that, that command, that's going to return it back. 
okay, to the calling program. So then I'm sending back that variable plus, very simple, this Python. I'm, I'm starting to like Python. Um, and the more I look, look at it, the more I say, well, this is just really simple stuff. So, um, okay. So anyways, that's what that is. Let's go back to the, to the, to the, uh, the pipeline and now I'm, just, I'm ready I'm ready to run it okay so let's debug now this is the second time I ran it right because actually before I debug okay it looks like it's already started I was going to go and publish first uh, well maybe it didn't catch the thing let me publish first so I got a publishing error file location variable hmm let's see what that is Publishing error. Failed to publish changes because of the filing validation. Fix errors to continue. Well, that should be good. Oh, what happened here is that my name, you see, remember I changed the name of the copy here? Well, when I set my variables, let's go to my variables. It is calling that activity, right? So if you change the name of your activity here, to the copy dash you got to change it anywhere you made you know you refer back to that activity so i really have to go like this copy dash now it's good to go now my error will go away right and the same thing goes for this one um, because before i didn't have the copy dash and that's the name of that activity so i'm just going to go in here change it to copy dash again copy dash and that's a good thing to you know teach right there it's a good error that uh, we came across so you guys can learn from that okay now i think it's ready to debug so let's publish it just to make sure when we publish it it'll check for errors there so i'm publishing and it's looking good that's it it completed successfully so now i can just jump over to debug and run this run this guy and before i run it it asks me do i want to change the storage account or do i want to change the storage account uh key and I say, no, uh, Boeing Blog Files is great with me, and the key with the crazy account key is great with me, too. So I'm going to say, okay, and now it's running. So as you see down here, it kicked off. Let's redo it. Oh, there we go. It finished. So the five minutes, by me talking so much, it just came back. So let's just look at the input is here. Um, right. So the input is here. To the thing which is boring blob files and that crazy account key that's nice to see then the output is just that we thought open this guy up and it's output is abfs tennis center boring blob files da 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 and then pipe and then greg koopman okay so that's that and let's come over to make sure it got to the other place is good so the input to the file location variable was just the beginning of that before the pipe and the one after it which was my name is my name right so that's how you do it so it's it really i encourage you to use databricks um i really thought it was like um probably a lot harder than it is uh it's really quite um, you know nothing's really simple once you get into certain areas of it but uh in general it's not it's definitely nothing to be afraid of as long as you start slow and get your steps going and uh i think it can be very very effective uh, for your strategy especially when you're building data lakes Okay, with that said, I'm going to thank you for watching and um, keep learning.